As we start to take a look at example 4, it's important to kind of briefly reflect on what we've done in the past several videos. We've seen that whenever we're given a region, we have kind of now an option whether we want to integrate it with respect to y or with respect to x. Now it's important for you to understand that on uh, assignments in this class or on exams, I may ask you to use a specific direction or I may give you the choice to use a direction of your choosing. Now, what that means is that you, of course, have to be ready for any possible direction at any given time, because you would hate to only understand how to integrate with respect to x, and then a question asks you, like here on 4a, please integrate with respect to y. In fact, on example 4 here, this would be a question where you would actually have to be able to tackle both approaches within the same problem. So let's see how that would be done. I want to find the area that's enclosed by these curves, the fourth root of x, and y equals 2 minus x. All right, so first I'm going to go ahead and just try to briefly sketch out what this looks like. I'm going to start by graphing my fourth root of x. It seems like it might be a complicated function, but it's actually pretty easy. Note that 0 is still the smallest value that I can plug in here. Can't plug in negatives and do a fourth root without going to complex numbers. But if I plug in something like a 16, I can recognize that I'm going to end up with a value of 2, or if I plug in a 1, I'm going to end up with a value of 1. So this is actually going to have still that same kind of gradual increase that a regular square root function does. I'm going to mark it on here. There's my fourth root of x. It looks something like that. Just a rough sketch. If I take a look here at my square root function, I'll notice, hmm, I can't plug in too big of values for x. Like I can't plug in 10 for x, because that's going to make a negative occur into the radical. The biggest x I could plug in would be 2. And I can definitely plug in smaller x's and get a square root shape. So I'm going to get something that kind of goes like this, just in a negative direction. I also have the x-axis, also known as y equals 0, to work with. Let me go ahead and label, though, my previous curve. And then, labeling y equals 0, that's easy. I'll just put that down here over my x-axis. This is just y equals 0. So I can see here that my shaded space, my region, is right here. Now if I want to integrate here with respect to y, that means that I'm interested in putting in horizontal rectangles. That's always what uh, my respect to y is going to require. So I'm going to go to my region here and just start to imagine sketching out some horizontal rectangles across the region and I want to figure out how in the world I'm going to attempt to measure them. Well, if I'm trying to measure the lengths of those horizontal rectangles, I'll notice I'm going to need to take these functions and rewrite them as x equals. So let's see, we will rewrite our functions as, let's see, I have a y equals fourth root of x, that's going to transform into x equals y to the fourth. And I have y equals a square root of 2 minus x. That's going to transform into x equals. And let's see what we would get for that. I'm going to get what a 2 minus a y squared. So these are the two different functions that I'm working with. And now I can see that on the right hand side, I always get this square root function which was my y squared, and on the right-hand side, that's always determined by my uh, function of my y equals the fourth root of x, but I need to use this form because, again, I'm looking for x-coordinates to measure that length. Now, I also need to figure out my bounds. The lowest that my lines can go is clearly at zero, and if I was able to find this intersection point up here, this would be really nice. Although this intersection point you might be able to eyeball, because it's pretty easy to spot that if I use 1, 1, that's a point on both of these curves. If you didn't know that, you could easily go ahead, set these two equations equal, and start to solve. You could also set these equal if it's harder to actually work with the radicals, and you instead refer to just work with larger powers. But it seems like here I can easily now state that the area can be found by doing Let's see, my uh, 2 minus y squared minus my y to the fourth dy, and then my bounds go from 0 to 1. 
This is perfect. Notice again that with respect to y, everything is in terms of y. My integrand is y's, my differential at the back is y's, and my bounds are talking about y coordinates. Okay. Now I'm again going to hold off on actually doing the evaluation here, and I'll ask you to go ahead and try to confirm for the moment that you do indeed arrive at an answer of 22 fifteenths. I'd go ahead and ask you to pause the video right now, see if you can work towards that answer to make sure you understand the integration correctly, and then when you unpause the video, we'll talk through part B. Okay, well now let's take a look here at part B. How would I find this exact same blue area, but if I was integrating with respect to x? Well, notice if I'm integrating with respect to x, the only thing that's going to change here is I'm going to have vertical rectangles. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to go ahead here and try to redraw out this picture just so things don't get too terribly cluttered. So let's suppose my picture looks like this again. I still have my blue space, but now I want to use vertical rectangles. And if I was to go ahead and draw in these vertical rectangles here, again, I want to determine how tall they are. So that means that I'm going to be able to use these original forms of my equations, or my functions here, because they already have uh, the basic shape of give me an x and they compute a y, which is what we need here. But one thing that I'll notice is, hmm, do all of my rectangles have the same top function? They do not. Notice that on the left side, the function y equals fourth root of x determines the top. y equals zero determines the bottom. But on the right side, my y equals square root of two minus x takes over and forms the top. Notice again, since I have two different kinds of integrals determining or, de, or having their heights determined by two different functions, I'm going to need to use two different integrals. And it seems like that point where things are going to split is going to happen right here at x is equal to 1. I'll even put down below here, we will need two integrals to calculate things in this direction. All right, so let's see how this would work. My first integral should be fairly simple. To find how tall my rectangles are over here, I see that the top function is my 2 minus x, and my bottom function was again my y equals 0. So I'm just going to put minus 0 there. You don't have to put minus 0, but for the sake of argument right now, I'm going to leave it in there so I can still see I have a top function minus a bottom. I can then ask, well, how far are my uh, red rectangles going to be, ex or where do they start and where do they stop for this left side? And it seems pretty obvious that they start at 0 and they keep going over until I hit 1. Then I'm going to have to add to that another integral where, oop, I'm sorry, I think I messed something up. On the left side, I have the wrong function up there, don't I? Uh, the function that I should have over here should be my fourth root of x, then minus zero, right? That's the function that's over there. On the right side, it's my square root of two minus x that pops up. And again, the bounds over here on this right side would seem like they're going to go from one over to two. If I add these two things together, I should get the grand total area of A. Now, up above, I asked you to confirm that the area of the blue space was indeed 22 fifteenths. And we did that with the respect to Y integral. Down here, we have two DX integrals. But of course, if I was to add up both of them, what should the total answer be? Well, it definitely should be 22 fifteenths because it's the same blue space. I'm just calculating the area in a different way. This is again a good reason, uh, or this problem illustrates why it's so important to be able to tackle questions in multiple ways. Because if I didn't specify on this question which approach I wanted you to take, and you just said, Kyle, I want to do the DX direction because I'm more comfortable with that. I don't like all that dy stuff, then what you might find is that you're going to actually have to do more work than if you had just simply kind of converted things to a dy direction. And the same thing could happen in the reverse. Maybe in some problems the dy direction is much harder than the dx. And it's important for you to try to practice these ideas so you can figure out how both approaches work and you have the ability to choose when you come to a new question.
Now remember that there are worksheets associated with all the different sections that we cover this semester. And so at this point, it's definitely, definitely a great idea to go take a look at that 2.1 worksheet and to start to practice the problems in there to test your understanding and to make sure that you're really ready to go for the, um, for the assignments as well as for the exams. And of course, if you have any questions, please let me know.